today in this class we are going to see the second chapter of a standard science that is microorganism friends and food in this chapter we are going to see what is mean by microorganisms different examples of microorganisms as well as their uses and how the microorganisms are harmful for us we'll see all these different things in detail microorganisms are present all around us but they are very very small to be seen with our naked eyes they are present everywhere in the atmosphere they are present in the air they are present in the water and they are present in the soil also but they are very very small that's why we cannot able to see them with our naked eyes microorganisms are also known as microbes microorganisms are very small small organisms which cannot be seen with the unaided eye unaided means without instrument we cannot able to see the microorganisms or simply or with naked eyes we cannot able to see the microorganisms they can be seen only with the microscope microorganisms may be unicellular or multicellular there are two types of organisms unicellular and multicellular unicellular organism means the organism in which only one cell is there or the organism which is made up of from only one cell is known as unicellular organism and multicellular organism means the organism which is made up of from more than one cell or which is made up of from many cells is known as multicellular organisms microorganisms may exist alone or in colonies sometimes these microorganisms are exist alone or sometimes they are exist in a colonies for example you might be observe that during the rainy season moist spread gets spoiled and its surface gets covered with a greenish white patches see in this picture that greenish patches white patches are observed on the bread in rainy season because of the moisture is present in the environment more and that's why by using that moisture and this bread these microorganisms grow very fast and these are nothing but the type of microorganism which growing on the bread as spoil that bread next we are going to see which are the types of microorganism mainly microorganisms are classified into four groups which are those we'll see there are four main types of microorganisms they are bacteria fungi algae and protozoa bacteria fungi protozoa and algae these are the more main four types of microorganisms for example bacteria lactobacillus and e coli these are the examples of bacteria Chlamydomonas and Spirogyra. These are the examples of algae. Bread mold, Penicillium, Aspergillus. These are the examples of fungi. And Amoeba, Paramecium. These are the examples of protozoa. These all are the four different types of microorganisms and their examples. Viruses are also considered as a microorganism. they are different from other microorganisms because they reproduce only in the body of host organism like bacteria plants or animals microorganisms viruses are also included in a microorganisms only but they are different than these four types because they are growing into the host cell of plants animals and human beings common elements like cold influenza and most germs are caused by viruses only you know that viral infection most be causes because of the virus only the cough influenza etc serious diseases like polio and chickenpox are also caused by viruses viruses are very small small in size still causes polio and chickenpox just we gone through a pandemic which is also caused because of virus that is a covid 19 which is caused by coronavirus these are the some pigs of bacteria protozoa and fungi 
algae, etc. This is the structure of virus. Next, we are going to see the friend and food. microorganisms play an important role in our lives. How they are playing important role in our life? See, some of them are beneficial in many ways, whereas some others are harmful and cause diseases. The organisms which are beneficial to us are known as friends or friendly microorganisms and the microorganisms which are harmful for us or which cause diseases are known as four organisms. Four microorganisms. Microorganisms are used for making curd from milk, for making cheese, pickles, bread, cakes, pastries, alcohol, wine, vinegar, etc. Microorganisms we are using to prepare all these things on large amount. Making curd from milk. See, the bacterium called lactobacillus. Lactobacillus microorganism we are using to produce curd from milk and help to convert milk into curd. Making bread also we are using different types of microorganism. The fungus called yeast reproduces in floor dough and produces carbon dioxide during respiration which makes the dough soft and helps in making bread, cakes, biscuits, pastries, etc. For making this bakery product we are using yeast and in reproducing yeast during their respiration CO2 is produced and because of the production of CO2 it that CO2 makes the dough soft and because of that we get these bakery products sponsor. In this way we are using the microorganism for making the curd as well as bakery products. Now next we are going to see the commercial use of microorganisms. Commercial use means on large amount we are using this microorganism in industries. Microorganisms are used for the large scale production of alcohol, wine, acetic acid that is vinegar. Yeast is used for commercial production of alcohol and wine. Is we are using to produce wine and alcohol on large amount in the industry. For this purpose, yeast is grown on natural sugar present in grains like barley, wheat, rice, and crushed fruit juices, etc. The process of conversion of sugar into alcohol is known as fermentation. Fermentation is a process in which sugar gets converted into alcohol with the help of yeast. That process is known as fermentation. Louis Pasteur discovered fermentation in 1857. Louis Pasteur discovered this fermentation process as well as Louis Pasteur discovered the pasteurization method which we will see in next. Microorganisms also we are using in the medicinal field also to prepare the different types of vaccine as well as to prepare the antibiotics we are using different types of microorganisms. Next we'll see that only that is the medicinal use of microorganisms. Whenever you fall ill, the doctor may give you some antibiotic tablets, capsules or injections such as of a penicillin. The source of this medicine is a microorganism. By using different types of microorganisms, we are preparing, preparing these antibiotics. Such a medicine, the source of these medicines is microorganism. Such a medicines are called antibiotics. These days, a number of antibiotics are being produced from bacteria and fungi. For the production of antibiotic, we are using bacteria and fungi on large amount. Streptomycin, tetracycline and erythromycin are some of the commonly known antibiotics. There are, these are the mainly antibiotics we are using that is a streptomycin, tetracycline and the erythromycin are the antibiotics which we are using commonly. These medicines kill or stop the growth of this disease causing microorganism. What is antibiotics? Antibiotics are the medicines which we are preparing with the help of microorganism which can kill the microorganism or stop the growth of microorganism and because of that 
we can able to recover the disease easily whenever we are going to the doctor doctors advise to take a antibiotic during taking the antibiotic we need to take some precautions precautions while administering antibiotics are given in your textbook which are those precautions we'll see it is important to remember that antibiotics should be taken only on the advice of a qualified doctor sometimes we are taking antibiotics without prescription of qualified doctors we are taking by our own but without prescription or without the advice of qualified doctors never take the antibiotics also you must finish the course prescribed by the doctor if you take antibiotics when not needed or in a wrong dose it may make the drugs less effective when you might need it in a future whenever doctor advise to take a antibiotic for 5 days 7 days you should complete that course otherwise it will not destroy or vanish the complete microorganisms in our body and that's why there is possibility to cause that disease again that's why need to take a complete course of antibiotics one more thing that is without prescription of doctor don't take antibiotics because whenever you need antibiotic then it will show the less effect that's why also antibiotics taken unnecessarily may kill the beneficial bacteria in the body whenever there is no need to take the antibiotic and we are taking by our own there is possibility to kill the useful bacteria which are present in our body that's why never take antibiotics whenever no need to take antibiotics however are not effective against cold and flu as these are caused by viruses just we learn that penicillin is a antibiotic which we are using commonly to cure many diseases in 1929 alexander fleming was working on a culture of disease causing bacteria suddenly he found the spores of a little green mold in one of his culture plate he observed that the presence of mold prevented the growth of bacteria in fact it also killed many of these bacteria and from this the mold penicillin was prepared when he prepared that mold he observed that many bacteria are killed because of that green mold and that's why from that only he discovered the penicillin and from that day onwards we are using penicillin to prevent the growth of microorganism or to kill the different bacteria as a antibiotic penicillin is discovered by scientist alexander fleming vaccine we know that we are taking different types of vaccine now also nowadays we are taking a covid 19 vaccine what is that vaccine when a disease carrying microbe enters our body the body produces antibiotic the body produces antibodies to fight the invader the body also remembers how to fight the microbes if it enters again so if dead or weaken microbes are introduced in a healthy body the body fights and kills them by producing suitable antibodies the antibodies remain in the body and we are protected from the disease causing microbe this is how a vaccine works several diseases including cholera tuberculosis smallpox and hepatitis can be prevented by vaccination vaccine is a medicine by taking which our body produces antibodies antibodies means what antibodies are a special type of proteins which is produced in our body by taking the vaccine and which fight against this different disease causing microorganism that's why vaccine we are taking before only and when this disease causing microorganism enters in our body that time this vaccine medicine produces antibodies in our body and they fight against this disease causing microorganism in this way vaccine works in our body against different diseases children are given injection to protect themselves against several diseases 
necessary vaccines are available in hospitals. Vaccinations are given to children for protection against polio under pulse polio program. Polio drops given to children are actually a vaccine. This is called a oral vaccination. We know that the polio, polio vaccine we are taking, which is a oral vaccine, which we are taking to prevent the polio disease. These days, vaccines are made on a large scale from microorganisms to protect humans and other animals from several diseases. For preparing these vaccines, we are using different types of microorganisms. In this way, microorganisms are used in medicinal field also on large amount. One more use of microorganism that microorganism increasing soil fertility. How they are increasing the soil fertility? Please. Some bacteria and blue-green algae are able to fix nitrogen from the atmosphere to enrich soil with nitrogen and increases its fertility. These microbes are commonly called a biological nitrogen fixers. See, we know that in the environment, 78% of nitrogen is present, but it cannot be dissolved or mixes into soil. Now, who can do that work? These microorganisms or bacteria only doing this work that absorb the atmospheric nitrogen and fixes that nitrogen into soil which can help to soil to make a more fertile. And the microorganisms or bacteria which can do this fixation work of nitrogen are known as biological nitrogen fixers. Next use that is the cleaning the environment is also very important role doing by microorganisms. You often see large amount of dead organic matter in the form of decaying plants and sometimes dead animals on the ground. You find that they disappear after some time. This is because the microorganism decomposes dead organic waste of plants and animals converting them into simple substances. These substances are again used by other plants and animals. Thus, microorganisms can be used to degrade the harmful and smelly substances and thereby clean up the environment. We know that dead organisms or garbage, after some days, it decomposes, vanishes and that's why it is easy to manage the things. Who is doing this decomposition? This decomposition is done by microorganisms only. In this way, indirectly, microorganisms cleaning the environment and they are very helpful for us to keep environment clean. Just we learn about the different uses of microorganisms and we are using different types of microorganisms. Next, we are going to see about the harmful microorganism. What is mean by harmful microorganism? Microorganisms are harmful in many ways. Some of the microorganisms cause diseases in human beings, plants and animals. Such a disease causing microorganisms are called pathogens. The microorganisms which causes diseases are known as pathogens. Disease causing microorganisms are known as pathogens. Pathogens enter our body through air we breathe, the water we drink and the food we cook. They can also get transmitted by direct contact with an infected person or carried through an animal. See how these pathogens enter in our body. They are entering in our body through air we breathe, the water which we are drinking and the food which we are taking. Through that or the direct contact with any person. It can enter in our body. Microbial diseases that can spread from an infected person to a healthy person through air, water, food or physical contact are called communicable diseases. The diseases in which microorganisms or pathogens are enters from ill person to a healthy person through air, water, food or direct contact Two types of diseases are known as a communicable diseases. 
There are some examples of communicable diseases are given. Cholera, common cold, chicken pox and tuberculosis. These are the different examples of communicable diseases. When a person suffering from common cold sneezes, fine droplets of moisture carrying thousands of viruses are spread in the air and the virus may enter the body of a healthy person by breathing. Harmful microorganisms. We will see some examples of microorganisms and how are they harmful for us. There are some insects and animals which act as a carriers of disease causing microbes. Housefly is one such a carrier. Housefly carries microorganisms which spread the diseases. The flies sit on garbage and animal etc. Pathogens stick to their bodies. When these flies sit on uncovered food, they may transfer the pathogens. Whoever eats the contaminated food is likely to get sick. That's why most of the time doctor or a parents advise don't take uncovered food or street food so that we can there is possibility to be a sick because of this entering of pathogens in our body. Mosquito is another carrier. Example of carriers are the female Anopheles mosquito which carries the parasites of malaria. Female Aedes mosquito act as a carrier of dengue virus. All mosquitoes breed in water, hence one should not let water collect anywhere in coolers, tire, flower pot etc. By keeping the surroundings clean and dry, we can prevent mosquitoes from breeding. Here, two types of mosquitoes are given, which causes malaria and death. We can prevent the breeding of those mosquitoes by keeping our environment clean and dry. Because most of the time, all mosquitoes breed in water. In this table, some common human diseases caused by microorganisms are given. See, tuberculosis is caused by bacteria and the mode of transmission is air. Preventive measures keep the patient in complete isolation. Keep the personal belongings of the patient away from those of others' vaccinations to be given at suitable time. See here, measles, chicken pox, polio, these all diseases are caused by virus and the mode of transmission is air. Sometimes it is contact or a mode of transmission is important. Cholera and typhoid is caused by bacteria. Mode of transmission is water and food. Preventive measures maintain personal hygiene and good sanitary habits. Consume properly cooked food and boil drinking water. Vaccination. Hepatitis A, which is caused by virus and mode of transmission, is important. Drink boiled water, drinking water, and vaccination are the preventive measures. Malaria is caused by protozoa and the mode of transmission is a mosquito. Use mosquito net and repellents, spray insecticides and control breeding of mosquito. This is the preventive measure against malaria. These all are the, some common disease causing microorganisms. Next we are going to see the disease causing microorganisms in animals. Several microorganisms not only cause diseases in humans and plants but also in other animals. For example, anthrax is a dangerous human and cattle disease caused by a bacteria. Anthrax is a disease which is caused in human as well as in cattle. And that anthrax disease is caused by bacteria. Foot and mouth diseases of cattle is caused by virus. Robert Koch discovered the bacterium Bacillus anthracis, which causes anthrax disease. One scientist Robert Koch discovered that anthrax is caused by bacterium and the name of that bacteria is Bacillus anthracis. Next we are going to see the disease causing microorganisms in plants. There are some microorganisms which causes diseases in plants also. Several microorganisms 
cause diseases in plants like wheat, rice, potato, sugarcane, orange, apple and others. The disease reduces the yield of crops. They can be controlled by the use of certain chemicals which kill the microbes. Different types of diseases are causing plant and because of those diseases, see here these leaves are looking like this. Tomatoes, these leaves, these leaves are showing different types of color or damage their leaf. Some common plant disease cause microorganisms are given in this table. Citrus canker is one plant disease which is caused by bacteria through air. And this is the picture which shows the citrus canker disease. Second rust of wheat which is caused by fungi and the mode of transmission is air acids. This is the pick of this rust of wheat. Yellow vein mosaic of bindi that is caused by virus mode of transmission is an insect. And this is the pick of yellow vein mosaic of bindi. These all are the three types of plant diseases which are caused because of microorganisms. Next that is most important thing we are going to see the food preservation. How to preserve the food and why to preserve the food. Food is spoiled by microorganisms. We know that in the summer season food is spoiled very easily. Spoiled food has a bad smell and bad taste and cause food poisoning. Food can be preserved by protecting it from a microorganism. After spoiling food, it can there is more possibility to cause a food poisoning. That's why we need to preserve the food. And this food poisons food. And this food spoiling takes place by microorganisms. Food can be preserved by different methods. They are chemical methods. We are preserving food by different methods, by using different methods. First method that is a chemical method. Food like pickles can be preserved by using chemicals like salt, edible oils, jams and squashes can be preserved by using sodium benzoate and sodium metabisulfide. These chemicals are called a preservative. We are using oil, edible oil and salt to preserve the food as well as we are using some chemicals sodium benzoate and sodium metabisulfate to preserve the food and these chemicals are known as preservative because we are using them to preserve the food. Second method by using common salt. Food items like fish, meat, amla, raw mangoes, tamarind, etc. can be preserved by using common salt. It prevents the growth of microbes. Have you observed that at our home also, our mother using salt to preserve meat and fish or sometimes chicken. Why she is using salt? To prevent from spoiling by microorganisms. In this way, we are using common salt to preserve the food. By using sugar, third method to preserve the food is by using sugar. Food items like jam, jelly, squashes, etc. can be preserved by using sugar solution. It prevents the growth of microbes. Sugar absorbs the moisture and because of the reduction of moisture, growth of microorganism is automatically reduced. And in this way, we are using sugar to stop the growth of microorganism and to prevent from spoiling the food by using oil and vinegar. Food items like pickles, vegetables, fish, meat, etc. are preserved by using oil and vinegar. It prevents the growth of microbes. By using oil and vinegar, we are able to prevent the growth of microorganisms. That's why to preserve different fruits and vegetables, we are using vinegar. By heat and cold treatment, heating food items kills microbes. Similarly, storing food items at low temperature prevent growth of microbes. The good example of this is our mother is boiling milk daily before giving us why to killing different microorganisms which are present in the milk. Only she is giving the heat treatment to that milk. And second, cold treatment that we are keeping different foods, fruits cooked food, vegetables in the fridge. Why? To prevent the growth of microorganisms. In this way, heat and cold treatment we are using to prevent the growth of microorganisms and to prevent the food from spoiling. 
next important thing we are going to learn that is a pasteurization what is mean by pasteurization the process of heating milk to about 70 degree celsius for 50 to 30 seconds and then suddenly chilling it to prevent the growth of microbe is called a pasteurization this process was discovered by louis pasteur pasteurization is a process in which we are heating milk at 70 degrees celsius to 15 to 30 seconds and because of that growth of microorganism will not take place and that's why we can able to prevent the milk from spoiling and this method of pasteurization is discovered by scientist louis pasteur next we are going to see that is the storage and packing Many food items are stored in airtight containers to protect them from microorganisms. Next, we are going to see the nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen cycle in the environment, how it will work? We know that in the environment, nitrogen is present on large amount, that is 78%. What happens that atmospheric nitrogen is fixed into the soil by using some bacteria that is blue green algae and some biological nitrogen fixers and in this way that nitrogen enters into the soil from atmosphere now what happens see the compounds of nitrogen in the soil that fixes mixes nitrogen into the soil and that mixed nitrogen into the soil is used uptake by plants and the plants we are taking animals taking those plants and in this way that transfer into the animals when animals are taking and they produces their waste in that waste nitrogenous substances are present on large amount and that's why that passes through their waste nitrogenous waste from extinction and death again that waste mixes into the soil and what happens after decomposition of that waste it can be turned into nitrogen and again it enters into the atmosphere as a atmospheric nitrogen in this way this atmospheric nitrogen again mixes into soil then it used by plants and then animals and then come into the waste and that waste again mixes into soil in this way this is a nitrogen cycle which is very very useful for all the living as well as non-living organisms. The nitrogen in the atmosphere is converted into nitrogen compound in the soil by nitrogen fixing bacteria and bacteria. Lightning also converted into nitrogen compound in the soil. The nitrogen compound in the soil is used by plants for the synthesis of proteins and other compounds. Animals feeding on plants get these proteins and other compounds. When plants and animals die, bacteria and fungi in the soil convert the nitrogenous waste into nitrogen compounds in the soil, which are again used by plants. Some other bacteria convert some nitrogen compound in the soil into nitrogen gas, which goes back into the atmosphere. Hence, the nitrogen in the atmosphere almost remains constant. In this way, nitrogen cycle works, and that's why the nitrogen remains constant in the atmosphere. In this way, in this chapter, we learn about different types of microorganisms, different uses of different types of microorganisms, as well as we learn the harmful microorganisms and how they are harmful for us. Food preservation we learn in this chapter, we learn about the pasteurization method and we learn about the nitrogen cycle.